Hold up, it's the weighing. Call up and you're weighing. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing when you think it's by the end. Shit, we crank it up again. Hold up, weighing. Call up and you're weighing. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing and we do this every day. Never ever duck a fade. Hold up. You're muted. There we go. There you go. I, again. <laughs> I start over. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me. My name is Francis. This is the Way in Boxing podcast and show. We appreciate you taking your time out for joining us. I'd like to tell you that today's show includes Manny Pacquiao, Senator Manny Pacquiao, the living legend, the absolute living legend, taking on the WBA super Super champion, your Dennis Ugas at 147. That is a replacement of Errol Spence, who has a tear in his retina. And he had to step out of the fight. And we're here with another one. Thank you to my Lord and Savior for another one, because without him, none of this would be possible. And I'm one half of the dynamic duo on the way in, baby. And I'm going to toss you over to my partner on the other side, Greg. Talk to him. What's up? What up, man? We back for another one. It's Wednesday. And it's that day of the week, man. Hump day. I'm going to talk some boxing. Obviously, it's fight week, a big fight week. You know what I mean? Francis was just mentioning Ugas and Pacquiao. We're going to get into that. But before we do all of that, definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, hit the like button, and, you know, help us grow this channel, help us build. We're trying to get to our goal of 1,000 followers. So definitely um, help us do that. And you can check us out on IG at The Way in Boxing, um, Twitter at The Way in Boxing. Um, what, sorry. Twitter is Way in Boxing One. Facebook is also at the Way in Boxing. So hit us up on all those um social media platforms and check out the website, man, thewayinboxing.com, where we do have all the rankings, we have all the up to date schedule and all the links to where you can listen or watch us. So definitely check us out there. And you're gonna see the number rolling across the bottom 914 205 5532. Man, you could call in, you know, give your opinions, drop your knowledge, and weigh in. Do exactly what the show says, weigh in. And um, yeah, man, we're going to get into it and talk about what's going on in the world of boxing, man. So definitely stick around, have some fun with us and chop it up. Whether you want to leave a comment in the comment section, call in, let us know, man. But we back for another one. Francis, what up, brother? What's happening, man? I'm excited because, again, it's another big fight. When yeah. We talk about fight week. It's another big fight. We talking about, you know, Manny Pacquiao. It doesn't really matter who Manny Pacquiao fights. The fact that Manny Pacquiao is fighting is an amazing thing. Absolutely. Obviously, we would like to have Errol Spence, who is arguably number one and number two, you know what I'm saying, top welterweight out of the yeah. young welterweight in the world. He had an injury. You know what I mean? Injuries happen in boxing. You know what I mean? It's obviously not his time. And so he had to be replaced by, you know, Ugas, who in some regard was supposed to get the Errol Spence fight. But Manny Pacquiao stepped up instead, and that fight presented itself, and he got pushed to the side. You know what I mean? They tried to take his title again after being elevated because Manny Pacquiao is the champion in recess. Um, he again now, by the grace of God, has been put back in the situation of another big fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. He remember when they asked him, why aren't you making an uproar about the fact that Pacquiao is looking to take the belt back, being that he was a champion in recess? He said, I leave everything in the hands of God. I leave hand everything in the hands of the man upstairs and look at it now. He's fighting on pay-per-view in front of the world because whenever Manny Pacquiao fights, whenever Manny Pacquiao fights, you can guarantee the world is watching. Oh, listen, man, even when he trains, <laughs> the world is watching. Look at the following he has. But um, definitely, man, it's almost kind of fitting that, you know, obviously we want to see Spence and Pacquiao. But um, I guess it's kind of fitting that Ugas got the fight because every the talk of the WBA and like you said about elevating and, you know, um, being champion in recess. So it's kind of fitting that they're the two guys that are um making up this fight weekend. Dirt Link is saying he's not ordering the fight <laughs> this weekend. Um, I'm still going to check it out, though, man. It's... You do never know what can happen. Obviously, this is on short notice. And, you know, listen, things happen on those short notice fights, man. But I'm really excited for this fight still. You know, obviously, it's not the fight we wanted to see. But definitely, 
Um, listen, it's Manny Pacquiao, you know, and we don't know. This might be his last fight. I mean, who knows? You know, he might just go back into doing the politics full time. But definitely um, we should check it out. And um, I'm still excited about it, you know, just to see the legendary Manny Pacquiao get in the ring, man. Yeah, that would be absolutely awesome. Awesome. You know what I mean? To see um, Pacquiao back at an an extended age, at an age that most people would say boxing isn't for you. You know, right. for you, yeah. for three, man, you're kind of old, you know, only yeah. the rare of the rare do it and do it at the high level to be fighting again. Another young fighter, you know, who guys is no bum. You know, he might have a few losses on his career, you know, on his record, but you know, Ugas is no bum, but he is no Mammy. He is no Aero Spence. Let's not kid ourselves. Right. So that's why most people <laughs> like Derek London will be reluctant to want to buy or watch the fight. Now, are they fair to want to feel that way? Yeah, they are. Yeah. It's because it's, it's not what was advertised. <laughs> it was not what was yeah. advertised. And... You know, it's it's terrible for Ugas because it, Ugas doesn't deserve that. You know what I mean? He doesn't deserve that, but it, it, he doesn't speak English like how uh, um, um, Errol Spence does. And Manny Pacquiao himself doesn't speak the greatest of it. He speaks English, but, you know, it's a little broken at times. Yeah. And, and so he can answer the questions and stuff. But you, you have to like, you know, you have to really listen if you're if you're not familiar with the Filipino language, you know, and how the tones and stuff of the words sound. Yeah, the he accent. Might be to the oh, air yeah. and the accent. Right. So uh, he still has a little bit of that that he battles with even to this date, which kind of makes it unique to himself. Right. It kind of makes Manny Pacquiao unique. Yeah, but facts. Who doesn't speak any English, right? It it it's like another translator. So, it, but what it does come down to at the end of the day is the fight inside the ring. Now, it's gonna be too late for Ugas to prove to people that they should have bought or watched the fight because I think this fight is gonna be sensational. I think Ugas, given the opportunity of a lifetime, is gonna show up and show out. We're talking about a fighter in 10 years. It took him 10 years after leaving Cuba on a boat to become a world champion. The goal was set out to do that. He became a world champion. Having now been elevated to a super champion, being that you're the real world champion because, you know, they don't recognize the regular um, champion. It's life-changing. Now you're playing with house money. Who guys playing with house money, in my opinion? He, he don't have nothing to lose. He wasn't nothing. even supposed to be yeah. here right now. <laughs> we supposed to be here right now. Yeah. This is supposed to be like a Terrence Crawford. Exactly, yeah. A Tom Porter, a Keith Thurman, a Floyd Mayweather, a Errol Spence. These are the type of names that are supposed to be fighting Manny Pacquiao, a Conor McGregor. Even that, yeah. Ugas. So Ugas is in the position... Of a lifetime. This is where you plain face rob the bank. I mean, listen, man. You beat Manny Pacquiao. They say in order for you to become a legend, one way to become a legend is to beat a legend, man. Yeah. And and and, and on top of it, they call Ugas the South Paw Killer. I repeat, yeah. they call your Dennis Ugas the South Paw Killer. Talk to me, Greg. Listen, man, facts of what you're saying. This, I think I'm gonna, I might put like 20 bucks on this fight, man. I'm gonna put some money out because, <laughs> um, you never know. Like I say, a lot of these, um, fill in fights, you know, or short notice, I should say, you know, some crazy things tend to happen sometimes, man, not what you expect it to be. Um, so that's what intrigues me about the fight. Yes, it's not the big name, you know, but like you said, you got the South Park killer coming in there, he might pull off something. You definitely might pull off something. I mean, listen, Timothy Bradley was able to beat Pacquiao when nobody really expected that to happen. So, you know, why can't it happen to Ugas? I mean, he's got a lot of physical advantages, you know, and Pacquiao is 43 years old. When is he going to show that he's 43? You know, this might be the fight, you know, as good as he looked against Keith Thurman. You never know. This, might, never know. <laughs> this might be the one to yeah. turn things around. You know what I mean? So Ugas, for those who don't know, the superstar Cuban boxer, uh, his record goes as follows: twenty six wins, twelve of those twenty six wins by way of knockout. He has four defeats. Um, that was early on in his career. He is ranked number one in Cuba at the welterweight division. 
He is ranked number five in the world at the welterweight division. Again, his name is your your Dennis Ugas Hernandez, alias 54 Milagros, 35 years old from Cuba. Orthodox fighter, 5'9", with a 69-inch arm reach. He resides in Miami, Florida, but he is by way of Santo de Cuba. Cuba. There you go. Last opponent was Abel Ramos, where he won the vacant WBA welterweight title. And then he was elevated. You know, um, he hasn't fought since then. That was in 2020, uh, September 6. Salute life lessons in the building. Ugas was out there getting tagged by Ramos. Now he's fighting Pac-Man. Ugas didn't look good uh, since that Porter fight. Just saying, bro. I agree with you. But guess what? I say it again and again and again, Greg. The moment, the moment, yeah, you compete at anything with somebody that's on a level that is below you, you for whatever reason compete at that level. But when you compete with somebody who's doing it at a higher level, Mm -hmm. for whatever reason, you compete at the higher level, you almost get the best of yourself. That's why fighters like to say, I want the best of you so you can see the best of me. Right. You yeah. It's the same thing. I feel like that, yeah. Having a legend like Manny Pacquiao. Yes. Okay, cool. Get knocked out by a man. Being on the resume of Manny Pacquiao might be cool for some, but I don't think it's cool for everybody to be a casualty on the record of Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> I think being on the, the, the side of a win will solidify your Dennis Ugas's career. It doesn't matter who he fights going forward. Yeah. <laughs> He's a real world champion at the welterweight division at WBA. They might want to throw a rematch in there. Yeah. They want to throw a rematch <laughs> who gets upset Pacquiao. But listen, if this is Pacquiao's last fight, I mean, he's not going to try to go out on the loss. You know, they might make a second one. So you're right about that. Raffi Ramirez in the building. Listen, Raffi, let me tell you something real quick, man. Your fame is growing on the way in. You know what I'm saying? Keep doing your thing. People shouting you out saying, yo, in the comment section, you know what I'm saying? Want to hear your parlays and your picks more, man. So, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you you hear, man. And don't forget to bring the Vino. You know he got that every time, man. And don't forget (laughs) to have it right here in the way, man. That's how we do I told you. Not tell you I'll make Raffi into a star. I told you that, right? (laughs) I told you. But anyway, shout out to you. You said Pat Man Decision 110. You said that for Friday, brother. You said, because you might want to change that after the weigh-in. Because y'all sleeping on Ugas. I really yeah. think y'all <laughs> be sleeping on Ugas. Listen, man. Listen. How much fighters do you know? How much fighters do you know, Greg? How much fighters do you know the world to make Sean Porter look bad? Listen. You're right, man. Okay. And when I say look bad, pardon me, Mr. Porter. I don't mean bad in terms of your sensational you fight. Very, very well against you. That performance that night wasn't your best. Yeah. To the point where a lot of people felt like Ugas did enough to beat you, more than enough to beat you. Yeah. By the way, he performed. Styles make fight. Styles make fights. So Pacquiao kind of fights in a similar way like a Sean Porter but with more punch volume. He does kind of like stay on top of you. Come, He's not in there with his head and stuff like that, but he's he's throwing with his hands. He's he's punching on them. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's fast. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's, it's fast. It's rapid. It, 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 it's just multiple combinations on top of combinations on top of combinations. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, definitely the angles that he gives you too, man. Pacquiao could be in front of you and then he's like to the side of you, you know, with his footwork. Derek Lincoln saying... He say he's snoring on that, <laughs> but he's saying you're bringing some good points, man. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a better fight, even if you're not favoring Ugas to win. I think it's gonna be a lot more competitive than people think. Like, listen, people need to realize Manny Pacquiao's 43 years old. You know, phenomenal shape. Obviously, everybody, it's your last performance that you look at, and he beat Keith Thurman. But I mean, that was what two years ago, Francis. So yeah, two years ago. Yeah, man. So you gotta really you know, factor that into um, this fight. You know, I'm not, listen, I'm not saying Ugas is going to win. I'm just saying I feel he's got a better chance than people are giving him, you know, 
they think Pacquiao is just going to walk all over him. I don't think that's the case, man. Pacquiao's going to have to work a little bit, you know, to get inside on Ugas and get his stuff off. You know what I mean? So um, that's how I see it going, man. It's going to be more competitive than people think. Rafi Ramirez saying, Ugas won, bro. They needed Sean for the ESJ pay-per-view. Derek, Derek's um, saying who we got. Listen, man, I don't know. You got to wait till Friday, man. Wait till Friday and we'll make our final picks. But um, how I stand right now, I'm just going to say it's going to be a competitive fight. And I'm sticking to that. But you'll hear, you'll hear our final picks, uh, sorry, on Friday. But um, yeah, man, how how you guys feel about it, though? You really think Pacquiao is going to walk through Ugas? Or will it be a little bit more competitive and might be a smart bet to put a little bit of money on Ugas? Because you just never know. What do you guys think? Y'all let us know, man. You could call in. You see the number rolling across the bottom. Like I said, 914-205-5532. And do what the show says. Weigh in. Call. Call in. Let's hear what you got to say, man. See if you get up on the scale and, you know, see if you measure up. You know what I mean? You got to know if you're waiting what you're waiting, man. You might have to put a little bit of, you might have to take off or put on. Depends on what it is. You know what I'm saying? You want to punch above your weight? You could punch above your weight. You can't. Hey. Don't be a weight bully, man. Because, you know, <laughs> bullying isn't good. This yeah, Rafi saying Ortiz, Ortiz and Guerrero are gonna be a heat fight too. I'm like, yeah, those guys are definitely yeah. past their prime, but you know, sometimes those make for actually pretty exciting fights because yeah. you know what I mean? They're on their last legs. So like you can't deny Victor still punches hard, you know what I'm he saying? Still punches hard, yeah. How long can he last? How exactly. Because when he runs out of gas, he tends to quit. In yeah. my opinion, you know what I mean? And yeah, Guerrero can box. <laughs> and Guerrero is a dog. He, he just, he just gets hard. he just keeps coming and coming. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Pause. So that's just how I go down. Um, so yeah, Manny Pacquiao, the superstar, legendary boxer, if you don't know, um, was one is one half of this uh dynamic fight that's taking place at uh this fight is taking place at the this fight is taking place at the T Mobile Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada, UA. Say the commission is the Nevada Athletic Commission. The promoter. Tom Brown of TGB Promotions and Manny Pacquiao of MP Promotions. Matchmaker, Tom Brown. Media, Australia Fox. Panama Telemetro. Channel 13, USA Fox Pay Per View. Derek Lincoln saying he thinks Pac Man is going to walk through Ugas and he got Robert winning over Victor Ortiz by decision now let's run down the card real quick in case you don't know we got manny pacquiao senator manny pacquiao is taking on your dennis ugas the wba super wealth super world welterweight titleist also you got mark missy out get it out francis yeah i'm already on it i'm already, I'm already <laughs> on let's not mess around and let's not mess a bit man let's I'm going to keep this out because there's some names here that got me like, yo. Man, I wish I had that app in high school, man. Might have, you know? Yeah, we would have made it through, huh? Would have helped a little bit. I got through, but it would have been a little easier. You know what I mean? Magseo. Okay, so Mark Magseo versus Julio Ceja. Julio Ceja, you know, has fought a few people before, i.e. Javante Davis. But anyways, Mark Magseo is... uh. Mag Sayo. Mag Sayo. Mark Magseo is 22 and 0, and he's taking on Julio Seja, who's the veteran, the veteran in the business. You also got Carlos Castro at the featherweight division. He's going to be taking on Oscar. I don't know. Escandon. Let's see what it says. Yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> Let's see what it says. Escandon. Escandon. So you got okay. Oscar Escandon versus yeah. Carlos Castro. And, and that is for the vacant WBC Continental America's featherweight title supervisor is Dwayne Ford. In the welterweight division, you got Victor Ortiz taking on Robert Guerrero. Victor Ortiz, you already know who he has fought. Money May all day. And so has Robert Guerrero. Both has taken L's. Isn't that amazing? Um, He has also fought right. Andre Berto. And I think Guerrero fought Berto too, but I could be mistaken. Um, yeah, I, think, I think he beat. Did he beat? Robert? I think he beat. I think he beat Berto. 
Yeah, I think he beat Birdo too. And then um, you know what? Let instead of thinking, <laughs> well, we just check. It's right here. I can just click on and check right now. I'll tell you right now. Mm. And you know what? Actually, thinking about Andre Berto, man, keep everybody in Haiti in your prayers right now, man. I know they're dealing with that earthquake aftermath, and I think they had a hurricane, you know, just kind of pass by there, man. So, you know, keep um Andre Berto, his home country, you know. In your prayers, man. Hope they get through this tough time. And and if there's anything you you guys could do, whether there's any donation things, you know, in your neighborhoods or whatever, you know, you know, try and help out those people. You know what I mean? For sure. You got Robert the Ghost Guerrero. Um, ooh, that was a little hot. Robert the Ghost Guerrero, thirty six victories, twenty by a way of knockout, six defeat, one of those defeats by knockout with one draw. He again is five nine. With a 71 inch arm reach. He's a Southpaw. He's from the USA, Las Vegas, Nevada is where he resides. But he's originally from Gilroy, California. His last opponent was against Gerald Thomas, and that was in 2019, September 28th. So it's about two years since he's been out the ring. We move over to his opponent. His opponent in the other corner, Virgil. Sorry, excuse me, not Virgil. Victor Ortiz. Like and back in the ring already? No. <laughs> yeah. And Victor Ortiz is 32. He has 32 victories, 25 of them by way of knockout, six defeats, five of those six defeats by way of knockout, and he has three draws. Victor Ortiz goes by the name of Vicious. Victor Manuel Ortiz, welterweight division. He's 5'9", with a 70-inch arm reach. He is originally from the Garden City, Kansas, resides in Ventura, California. His last opponent was Devin Alexander, and that was February 17, 2018. So it's been about three years since Victor Ortiz has been out the ring. And if I'm not mistaken, Victor Ortiz has been training with... I don't know. Robert Garcia? No? Did he go back? Did they make up? Oh, I just seen him on the track. Who was he on the track with? Oh, Lord. I'm drawing a blank. Who was he in the track with? Uh, can't remember who I seen him on the track. It's going to come back to me. But that was the last time he was in the ring. So um, that should make up for a good fight. Between the so. Yeah, man. I'll go back. Between the two. Um, also, you got Frank Martin. Frank Matt Martin is on the card against uh, Ryan. And you got Josue Venezuela. What? Yeah, Venezuela. Get, get it out, man. Valenzuela. Man, you see it, right? <laughs> yeah. But see, that's why modern technology is here to help us out, man. So we get these names pronounced properly. So, you know, thank God for that. Let me see. V A L N Z. Yeah, it's Venezuela. It must be Venezuela. Valenzuela. Valenzuela. There you go. Valenzuela. Um, Valenzuela versus uh, Dante uh, Strayhorn. Um, John Dato versus Angel Antonio Contras. You have Steven Torres taking on Justin Rolfe and Burley Brooks. If you don't know, he's a part of. Uh, um, man down promotion, which is Errol okay. Spence's promotional company, um, trained by Derek James. Uh, he's gonna be taking on Cameron Silva Rivera, and Mikel Clements is making his debut against Alessio Villa Lobos. Let me see if I'm right on that one. You know what? I that sounded, I, I would have said the same thing. Villa. Sounded yeah, that sounded pretty close. Cool. Let me see. I could be wrong. Villa Bos. Villa Bos. See, even better. Villa Bos. Uh, uh, let me see. Yeah, so that's what's gonna be a pay per view card, man. I think people should purchase, man. Support the sport, man. Support, you know, yeah. this card. that'd be good if you support the sport. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? So that's the fight that's going to be taking place. Um, we're excited for it. That's, you know what I mean? That's going down um, this weekend. Let's see what else is taking place this weekend so that we can, uh, you know what I'm saying, bring some highlight to it. 
we here. We talking some boxing. And I'm excited. I like to talk boxing. So smash that thumbs up button because it does help with the growth and the visibility. Absolutely, man. And if you've missed any of our interviews, man, you could go back on the YouTube page. We post all the highlights, um, post full interviews. So go back if you've missed anything, man. We've had some good interviews, some up and coming fighters on, like we had Tristan and John Michael, you know, on the other night. So definitely go and check that out, man. That's the future right there. And um, yeah, man, yeah. go back. We've got a whole lot of videos, man, and a whole lot more coming. So definitely stay tuned. Hit that bell icon so you know exactly when we drop some content on here and check us out on IG and Twitter. And Facebook, like I say always. And hey, uh, great. Yo. All I gotta say is hit the bell icon so you can be a part of the notification. Gang. <laughs> be a part of the notification gang. Come on, be a part of the family, man. We welcome you. Open arms. Be a part of the family. We love y'all, man. We talk boxing and we love it. Don't be mad. <laughs> <laughs> they can't get mad, man. They'd be entertained. <laughs> Uh, hey, tell a friend to tell a friend, man. Just tune in and check us out, man. That's all you got. <laughs> Raffy's on something else, <laughs> Who plug Raffy in the day, yo? Plug him out. Nah, you good, man. You straight. Raffy's something you else, man. man. Yeah, yeah, they playing. Let me see. Yeah, so that's it, really. That's really the fight of the weekend. So they're capturing the whole entire weekend. Um... How do you feel about that? You know, I feel good. I mean, obviously, anytime boxing is on, I always, you know, I'm up for that, man. And unfortunately, man, this whole summer was supposed to be a bunch of big fights. Um, but at least we're getting to see Manny Pacquiao fight. Like I said, man, legendary Manny Pacquiao, Senator Manny Pacquiao. So definitely um, looking forward to that. Just the fact that he's going to be in the ring, you know, so um we're going to deal with that. Obviously, like I said, the whole summer kind of been messed up. A lot of these fights getting pushed back, you know, like Canelo and them was supposed to fight September. Um, but I think the years might be finishing strong, Francis. I yeah. think the year might be finishing strong with like the fights that got the dates that got moved, you know, Shakur and Heron supposed to be happening. I think um, what I read today, Porter and Crawford, I think the final date for the first bit is August 20th. So I think okay. after that, things should kind of be in place for us to know like, exactly when they're going to fight. So um, there are some things to look forward to, um, you know, later on this year. But definitely, listen, Pacquiao's in the ring. Yep. Anything can happen. So listen, man, it's boxing, man. I'll watch, I'll watch anybody box. You know what I mean? I just love watching the sport. So I'm, I'm still pretty excited about that. Definitely, definitely excited about that right there. That's always good news to uh, talk about. A lot of people not really the greatest of excitement this weekend because another fight that let us down, man. It's another yeah. fight that really yeah. stepped away from us. Um, and uh, but at the same time, I really believe. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to me. Do not sleep on your Dennis Ugas, man. He has dog in him. I think Ugas will go out on his shield, man. You might see somebody, you might see both of them hit the canvas, man. You just might. And pack your tough as nails. You just might oh, see yeah. both of them hit the canvas. It's definitely a possibility. But listen, with their two styles, I mean, listen, it's more than possible that, excuse me, they both could um definitely be on the floor. You know what I mean? So, right. you know, <laughs> Derek Lincoln saying it's going to be a snoozer, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> How can it be a snoozer when Manny Pacquiao is fighting? Do you know the type of fighter Manny Pacquiao is? The type of pressure and power that he comes forward with, there's no way. Yeah, I don't think he can ever be in a bad fight, man. You know, unless it, unless his opponent is going to be running away, you know? I mean, Pacquiao doesn't really have bad fights. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I can't name one. I don't know if you can, but give it a little more credit than that, Derek. I think it'll be, you know, a little more exciting than that. I also want to uh, give a little shout out to Manny Stop and Ugas, bro. Okay. <laughs> How much you putting on it, Derek? Hey, Derek. How much are you putting on it? Daddy. Um, he said he just wants to see what round it's in. That Rigo fight was boring as <laughs> hell. Uh, damn, you terrible. You terrible. It, it, yeah, I know. I can't even say nothing. Yeah. I can't even say nothing, man. I hear you. 
I don't know, man. Anything would be better than that. To be hundred dollars. All right. Oh, you said he got hundred on it. That he gonna stop? Who got that? Pat Hill gonna knock up? Pat Man hasn't. Yeah, I, I'll take that for. I'll take that bet with you. Nah, let's talk about this off air. I gotta make. <laughs> I gotta make some changes to that bet real quick. But um, we'll talk about that off air. Um, Jared Lincoln saying Regal was at the skating rink. I mean, yeah, he could have stood in there and fought a little bit more. He definitely was on the bicycle a little bit, you know. Oh, no, what did it. you think of the press conference today between um Ugas and Pacquiao? I didn't see. I just saw the face off, man. I didn't see the whole press conference. Did you see the size? Well, obviously, everybody yeah. up against yeah. Pacquiao is going to look a little bit bigger. But uh, anything in that, did you see that uh, you take away from that might change your mind, sway it towards Ugas or towards Pacquiao? Not really, man. I mean, listen, they both look confident as they should. And um, obviously, I mean, listen, Pacquiao's been fighting at welterweight, so most of the welterweights are bigger than him anyway. So, you know, nothing surprising there as far as, you know, how much bigger Ugas is than him. Um, other than that, nah, man, they both look confident. They look ready. Um, I can't say that I've seen anything in their eyes to say, you know, you know, some one of them looks, you know, not shook, but like maybe not ready. You know, they both been training. Obviously, it was for different opponents, but listen, man, that's the name of the game. And I didn't really see anything, not yet. Maybe the final weigh-in, you know, maybe we'll see something, but I didn't really see anything today. You know, what's so funny about that is uh, the secret weapon there could be um, Silas, right? <laughs> Silas is a, is, is a mastermind at coming up with game plans right, true. To, to execute. And uh, I feel like this is where we get that understanding of the levels, right? The game plan. And Ugas is the type of fighter I feel like can follow a game plan even when the pressure, you know, and 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 and, and the power is on, you know, the, the yeah. speed and the power of Manny Pacquiao. You're feeling it. I feel like Ugas can stick to the game pressure, the game plan, sorry, and execute it. He kind of did that against Sean Porter, mm-hmm. knowing that he had to take some headbutt, you know what I mean? And he had to be worked to the body a few times and he stuck in there. You know, even though Pacquiao is a bigger puncher than Porter, we get that. We get that. But you're still getting punched nonetheless. Do you understand? Yeah. It doesn't make for doesn't make uh, a difference, especially when you get head. But it might feel like you took an extra punch, you know, as it bangs your head and you're dazing. Right. True or lie? No, no, you're right, man. You did- and you're getting punched. It almost seems like an extra punch. headbutt could be just as there devastating. Is an extra punch. <laughs> Yo, look at Gary Russell. Like them guys felt that headbutt. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like his nose broken everything so yeah so definitely that does happen 100 percent. i hear that bro that person <laughs> was dead only like 20 fans with their all pat man entourage i have a bad feeling about the pay-per-view numbers well you got to understand the pay-per-view numbers definitely are gonna take a hit you're gonna be down yeah <laughs> and, and, and i'm pretty sure everybody involved knows that it's a pay-per-view number yeah. you're gonna take a hit they're going to try to see if they can make it up on the live gate. And obviously having these three markets, Fox, Australia, Channel 13, which I'm might be in the UK. Let me double check that right now. And the pay-per-view in the US should be enough to... Uh, it says Israeli Channel 13 Sports. Let me see. Channel 13 Sports. Where is this from? Channel 13. Channel 13. Yeah, but anyway, Channel 13, whatever Channel 13 is, I feel like they're going to feel like make it up. And then also in the, in the attendance, right? 20,000, 30,000 at T Mobile Arena. Um, I think, I believe 20,000 is the max or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Man. So I'm sure they'll get probably maybe 18 at least. Ticket sales. Come on, that fight initially sold out quick, right? When it was on uh, Pacquiao Spence. I'm trying to see where. where um... Yeah, I think so, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I, I believe it did. It sold out pretty quick. Definitely like in the first week. But. 
for everybody that's trying to sell the ticket or trying to get refund under the ticket. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're giving out refunds on the ticket. I'm just gonna want I don't know if even know if they offered refunds because you know, I know a lot of people do want it. Yeah, of course they do. <laughs> Hold on, Pac Man. Yeah, man, but definitely hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon, man. Definitely, listen, we have, we have some hot content coming, man, so definitely look out for it. Oh, yeah, we do. Screw we, Yeah, man, we out here working, definitely. So you're going to see what we have coming up and um, definitely be trying to grow this boxing community over here in Canada. And we want to share it with the rest of the world, man, and show you what's going on over here, man, because we do have some top radio fighters that you're going to get to know very soon. So you guys keep um, tuning in. And listen, speaking of fights, fight cards, man, on our side of the border, you know, we do have some fights coming up, you know, August 28th, um, Yvonne Michel, they got a card in Quebec City, you know, so if you definitely, um, you know, in Quebec, obviously, you could go check that out. Um, Kim Clavel is fighting on that card. Michael Zweski, uh-huh. or Zuski, uh, Maslam Akdenis, who he was on the show a couple months ago. Yeah. Um, he was fighting down in Mexico, so it's going to be his first fight um, back in Canada since then. So, um, Definitely look out for that. You got who else is fighting? Who else is fighting on that card here? I think those are the main names. Um, what we got here? Sebastian Bouchard. You know, he doesn't have an opponent yet, but he's gonna be on that card. So definitely we got some fights over here. And obviously out Nova Scotia, you know, September eleventh. Um is it, sorry, is it on the eleventh? Yeah, Ryan Rosecki, you know, the cruiserweight champion, he's gonna be back in action. Jake Dau is gonna be fighting on that card. Jesse Wilcox, who we seen on the show a few weeks ago, he's gonna be on that card taking on Brandon Brewer in an all Canadian yep. fight. So, you know, that should be a real, real good fight. Um, and I think Mary Spencer, I believe, is making her debut on that card. She's a um amateur fighter. I think she's won, you know, she's won a few titles over the years in the amateur game, making her pro debut. So uh definitely look out for that. Um, Canada will be slowly getting back to where we were. So, you know, I think there's going to be able to fans in attendance. <laughs> those cards. So, hey, be getting there, brother. Rafi. Yeah. That's the news. Eddie Hearn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> Rafi, in other news, make sure you show up on time tomorrow. Nah, I'm messing with you. Nah, you start, man. They're looking for you, man. Over here in the way, baby. You know the way. You no, know we do. We come over here and we talk boxing. You know what I'm saying? We 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 talk shit and swallow spit. Derek London, shout out to you, Manny. KO is a plus 163. About to bet my 100 over here. There you go. Drop it over there. In other news, though, Rafi Ramirez, if you don't know, now you're about to find out that Andy Ruiz Jr. is going under the knife. Dun, dun, dun. Andy Ruiz Jr. is definitely... Um, going to have right knee surgery. He said he's been struggling with right knee surgery for a long time and given the opportunity now to, you know, have surgery, having not been able to run, do certain movements on his knee. Yo, JP, what up? You stick to move real well, JP. We're looking for you, man. Uh, We're bringing Tam. Yeah, we're waiting for Tam to tap him right now. Something might have happened and whatnot, so we just... We just tapping in her when hear what's going on with her. JP, man, why don't you jump on, man? You're supposed to be on the show on Monday, brother. I send you the link, JP. Jump on right now. Let us know what's cooking with you. And if you broski there, let him come through as well. Yo, so Andrew Ruiz Jr. is having right knee surgery. And uh, this procedure is going to be done by Canelo Alvarez's doctor who performed on his knee, uh, Pedro Lomeli. Um, and that's what he said to Deportes, ESPN Deportes, he being Andy Ruiz Sr. said this about his son, Andy Ruiz Jr. Hmm. Bring the whole fam on the show, man. They give us hopes that he would be that he would come back in December. The physical yeah. training, the doctor told us that if everything goes well right now, then that possibility exists. But we will see when. The moment arrives. Right now, we're happy that the surgery went well. So he will see Andrew Ruiz the middle of next year. 
Okay. We'll okay. See, I say we'll see Andy Ruiz. If not, if we don't see him by March, we'll see him by July, August of next year. That's we, my I'm, I'm glad that we didn't, you know. Okay, our, yeah. You know, I'm glad his last fight, obviously against Ariola, you know, people saying he didn't look the greatest, but he yeah. didn't make any excuses about it. If he's had this knee problem for a long time, he definitely um didn't make it an excuse, man. And like a lot of these fighters fight with a lot of injuries, a lot of, you know, a lot of these guys aren't a hundred percent. So no. I'm just glad, you know, a lot of times you hear some of these fighters, oh, my shoulder, or this was, you know, he ain't saying none of that. He's just doing what he got to do to be better. So I like that. No excuses. He said the ref is going to wave it off. He's going to get tagged up so bad. I don't see it, Derek. I don't. I don't. I, I see he's going to get tagged up, but to the point where they're going to stop it like that? I don't know. Ref is saying he's going to box and counter and low key run. I've never <laughs> seen Ugas run. So that's a really, that's a bold statement. I've never seen Ugas run. Oh my God! The 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 the, con the conversation continues between Estrada and Chocolatito on their trilogy that they're looking to uh, impart on. Yeah, that needs to happen, man. You think it does? I think so. I I enjoyed the last fight. You know that needs to happen. I believe I had Chocolatito winning, but you know Estrada got the win. Yeah, they need to run that back, man. That is definitely action packed. The whole fight. Wow. Yeah. What do you think about that fight? Who do you have winning the second fight? You know what? I, I'd have to go back and look at it again to really give like a proper assessment because that okay. one is yeah. one of the fights. Whenever Chocolatito fights or Estrada, it's just so fast. Like you got to really yeah. go back and see <laughs> how the pen, the punches really land. Remind yourself of you know the punches that landed and 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 what happened because. I had Chocolatito coming on late, but right. I had Estrada yeah. early, you know what I'm saying, with that that pressure early, kind of trying to pick it up from the rounds before yeah. last fight. Never really worked, but some people felt like he the swing rounds was close enough for Estrada to win. So that and and it's yeah. a championship fight. You gotta do a, just a little bit more than you normally would have to do to be the champion. Yeah. As yeah. We, I think next if they fight again, I think uh -huh. somebody gonna have to go on the floor. Like that will be the decider. It'll be like such a close fight that whoever touched the floor first is probably going to be the one who loses. Yeah, like it was that kind of fight. <laughs> and and that's amazing to that'd be amazing to see um, that fight again. That division fighters in that division has always been going back because Quadras I think had a great fight against Chocolatito as well. Chocolatito just uh, just a monster in that division, man. Yeah, um, because he just fights, you know, he comes forward and he throws hands and he fights. So it's amazing. It's amazing to see um, that fight looking to take place. All right. Uh, just you got <laughs> Derek saying you're going to be back. You're going to be back on Monday after it happens. No, don't, don't <laughs> come back on Sunday. We'll be here on Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday. We might even. Yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. We might be back on Sunday. Ha! <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying we might be back on Sunday, y'all. All right. What and, else is news? And, bro, another news note, man. Jessica Kamara. Remember, um, she's supposed to fight for a world title. She, that fight got canceled, man. Her opponent, unfortunately, visa issues, you know, can't get in. And she won't be fighting. So, you know, we got to wait for her to be a world champion and bring that belt on the way in. So we can see it live, man. But say for the people one more time in the back. What? Say that again? Say that one more time for the people in the back. Oh, yeah. Jessica Kamara, man, the Cobra, was supposed to be fighting. Can't remember the exact date. In a few weeks. And she's not going to be able to fight because her opponent having some visa issues and wasn't able to get into the country. So that fight, I don't know if it's postponed or would just happen at a later date. But, um definitely you know unfortunate we're looking for a world champion a canadian world champion but um that's going to be put on hold for now but nonetheless we know she'll be back and um you know she'll hopefully get that shot again definitely we're looking for her to bounce back um and it's gonna happen man it's 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 right along the way and uh, we're gonna have somebody to cheer and, and pump up and 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 the support man i can't wait um for that to happen also, in other news, too short Bentley, man. Denzel Bentley is back in the rig September 11th 
at the Copper Box Arena. He's going to be taking on Robinson. Um, and this one should be a good one. It's Showtime is uh, is the fight card that's been put forth. Um, what is your take on that? UK Denzel, guys, he, he, uh, he lost his last fight, right? He fought... Um, he did. Um, bounce back for him. Oh, I know. Man. I see who it is, but I can't, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, I we were talking about that fight too, man. Yeah, I know his name. Yo, when you see it... Yeah. <laughs> be oh my God. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's but yeah, man. Go for him getting back in the ring, man. We're going to see how he performs off of a loss, man. That is always the test of Felix who you Cash. are. Huh? Felix. That's right. Cash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesus. <laughs> so annoying. Once you see it, it's like, how did I forget that? But yeah, Felix Cash is who he lost to. But yeah, that bounce back fight, man, is definitely, you know, you see what guys are made of. And see if he could push on with the, you know, the next part of his career, you know, after the loss, man. We'll see what that experience does for him, uh, you know, as far as um, what he could do with his career. You know, some guys completely turn their career around after a loss. Like, a loss is not always bad, man. You know, yeah. you, know it, you can move on. I think sometimes we put a lot of pressure on guys to keep that O. But um, if you lose to solid competition, I mean, there's nothing else to say. Just then it's that. You know what I mean? Uh, what do you guys think about uh it, never mind? I appreciate you guys tuning in, you know what I'm saying, all the time, rocking with us. Um, there's some fights that you know potentially could happen. You know, a fight between uh Jaime Mungia and Gabriel Rosado. You yes. still have Daniel Jacobs out there that haven't, you know, that haven't fought in a while. Um listen and check our IG page, man. We called that fight first, man. Mungia and Rosado. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we we did. We called that first, man. So (laughs) I hope that happens. That's a good fight. Yeah, that's a that's a fight I gotta take place right here. You got. I'm gonna show you, man. Check it out. Yeah, y'all check. They better give us some. Yo, Greg, we gotta pull that one back out. Yeah, I'm telling you. (laughs) You put a date on it, no? Yeah, yeah, it's there, man. We can find it. See them right here. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> caption is let's make it happen. That's Mungia, T Mungia. See the caption over here? Absolutely. Yeah. Make yeah. Let's make it happen. All I'm saying is, wow, they got to give us some credit, man. Y'all got to give us some credit, man. And I tag this, and I, I tag them both in it too. Trust me. Yeah, I give it some credit. That's a fire fight for us to see. You're making man. fights over here. <laughs> like, what's up? Like, you know, we trying to do what we got to do, do our part of part of the game of boxing. You know what I mean? So what do you guys think about that fight, man? Let me know. Rosado versus Mungia. Let me know. Let me know. And listen, guys, what fights are you looking forward to? Um, What fights are you guys looking forward to seeing? You know, we have Shakur Stevenson, Jamel Heron. You know, I don't know if there's a final date on that, but it's pretty much going to happen. Um, who do you think Canelo and Caleb Plant, how do you think that's going to go? You know, obviously Wilder and Fury is coming up. Um, what else? we got Crawford and Porter. Nothing is final, but I mean, that fight's most likely going to happen. You know, who's Devin Haney going to jump back in the ring with? Obviously, we got Roley still calling him out. You know, actually, I shouldn't say that. He called out um, Tank again over the weekend and said, um, you know, he only calls out Big Fish. Yeah, you know, yep. <laughs> you know, say he's done calling out Devin Haney. So, um, and as for those who don't know, drop some other news on you because that's what we do, man. We're going back and forth, but giving you news. Um, David Allen was called out by Allen the Savage Babbage, and um, maybe they can get that fight going. The White Rhino, you know, what I'm saying, called him out, and uh, I'm gonna share it with you. So just lock in. Um, here you go, right here. Just hold on a minute. I want the one. No, Who's no, no. Pause it. Chill out. Chill out, bruv. You be going too crazy. You getting married, and you turning up, <laughs> you going sideways. What's what's happening with him? Hey, I'll fight it. It's rocket, man. It's my dear promoter of my army of savages. Sir Eddie O'Hearns, 
I want them all. Give them all to me. <laughs> I want the one who is known as the champions of all cruiserweights, Sir Lawrence of Ocolis. I want the one who has been crowned the king of cruiserweights. So I'm telling you, man. I love the savage, man. You this ready? is what boxing is about, man. This, this, this I want is what next out, I'm, I'm ready tomorrow. This is what boxing's. But when we talking, you know, the number. Like, come on, man. Shane Mosley said Floyd Mayweather fights for money. You fucking dummy. I'm a prize fighter. That's what I'm supposed to fight for. A prize. But he said he won it all, man. He, let's go back. Ross Carrivas of Colombia. And I want the one who has been known as a cute shape idiot. So idiot. But before all, I want the one. Who has been known as a noble warrior, Sir David Wellens? Give them to me, and all you chaps are gonna bow when I whoop him. Oh, Lord, I know you got him. I know you got him. <laughs> but man is in trouble. I'm gonna show you how great I am. It's my dear promoter of my army of savages, Sir Eddie O'Hearns. I want them all. Give them all to me. I want the one who is known as the champions of all cruiserweights, Sir Lawrence of Ocolis. I want the one who has been crowned. So, Sir Lawrence Ocoli, <laughs> the first name he called out, right? Yeah. <laughs> first name on the book, y'all take note. Lawrence Ocoli. Now, give you the next name. The King of Cruiserweights, Sir Oscar Rivas. Oscar Rivas, Rivas. Colombia, Sir Bridgerway. Let's go. Colombia. And I want the one who has been known as a cube shaped idiot. The cube shaped idiot. Who's been known as the cube shaped <laughs> idiot? Let me know in boxing if you know who's been known as the cube shaped idiot. Sir Idiot. But before all, I want the one who has been known as a noble warrior. Sir Dave O'Wellens. And Dave Allen, the white rhino, is next. Give it to me. And all you chumps are going to bow when I whoop him. Oh, Lord, yeah, I know you got him. I know you got him. <laughs> but the man is in trouble. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's my all right, deal. that's enough for you, man. Yeah, out, man. yeah you got to chill what? out. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? You sound like you got a mouthful of rocks. <laughs> yeah, man. Sound like an 80s Russian wrestler. Like, yo, them old-time interviews. <laughs> like, for real, yeah, like, bro. Hey, you got to take your word for it, Francis. He can't hear a damn thing that man's saying. Yeah, you know? that's that's some big names that he called out yeah, right there. he called out some big names. <laughs> I mean, Okoli's a big puncher. Yeah. I mean, can the, pressure, can the pressure and the heart of Alan Babbage be enough to withstand that long range punching power that Lawrence Ocoli, you know what I'm saying, provides. One would say he doesn't have the experience in the boxing ring to keep Savage off of him, but, you know, we'll have to see. He punches hard, man. Right, yeah. You got people, like, having seizures and stuff in the ring. David Allen, same thing. He's another dude that's really tough, taking some punishment over the years. And, um, you know, he, he got a good chin. Can the Savage, that would be a war. Definitely would be a war. That would yeah. be. I think that's the right fight for him to fight. Dave Allen coming off of a few years out the ring, um, taking on Dave Allen. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see that fight. Yeah, no, I can't disagree, man. I definitely think that would be entertaining and a war, like you're saying, for sure. Because Dave Allen, who... Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Y'all stop playing. I said stop. Y'all stop playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> what they say? What do you say? Oh, dirt now he's saying, what did he say? Right, let me see. Yeah, he's saying can... Wilder Fury is not happening. Fury keep coming up with new stuff every week to not have the fight. Yeah, no, it does seem like that. But at some point he gotta he gotta get in there with him. 
And I don't understand too, like Francis said many times, man. If you think Deontay Wilder is so easy, then just like fight him. God, just get it, get it over with, man. So David Allen was in the ring last February 8th, 2020, where he took on where he took on <laughs> Dorian Darch and he knocked him out in a sixth rounder in the third round. So he's scheduled, he being David Allen, to fight August 27th, 2021 um, in a sixth rounder. I guess making his way back up, back into the sport. He's going to be fighting in Sheffield. And um, his opponent he's going to be fighting is Andrea Pessi, who's 7, 13, and 3. So he's definitely fighting some dudes who he's supposed to be knocking out mm. to make his comeback and his way back into the sport. What's your take on that? How do you feel about that? Is that the way to go? I don't see why not. Like, you know, I know you said how long he's been out of two years? Yeah, two years out of me. I mean, I don't see why not, man. You know, at that oh, weight. Dave Allen, no, no, Dave Allen was about a no, he's about a year. About a year? Okay. Fighting that's... August, uh, he's fighting next week. So should okay. be all right. uh yeah, I don't see why not. I don't think that's a bad move, you know. Um, I think they should make it happen. It would be entertaining for sure. You know what I mean? And, you know, guys that big, anything can happen anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it just takes one. So, um, in other news, I'm going to continue to just drop news. This is how we're going to do it today, man. We're just going to rock and have a great time. This is happening right here. Can you see that? I can see that. Yeah. Hot off the press. That's, uh, Martin Bacol. Sparring Usyk. Usyk looking thick in the shoulders and in the neck. Uh, Martin Bacol is known as a big puncher. And uh, he's getting some good work with him today um, in preparation for that big fight against uh, Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua, can he pull it off, man? Usyk, Usyk I'm talking there. about. Can he pull it off? Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about, you know, obviously he didn't look the greatest against Chisora and is heavyweight too big for him? I mean, we're going to see, man. Definitely going to see. He's facing one of the biggest out there, Anthony Joshua. So we'll see if he could, you know, outbox him and, you know, hit and not get hit. You know, see how see how hard it is to do that against Anthony Joshua. Thanks. Derek and Lincoln. Oh, just sorry. sorry. I didn't want to cut you off. I just want to read his no, comment. Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, Derek Lincoln saying he agree. He said he agrees. He know Wilder ain't easy. He don't want none of that without being able to be cheating. <laughs> He's trying to figure out how to cheat. He's trying to That's figure out how to cheat. Guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. And Joshua. Yeah, it's going to be a good fight, Derek, for sure. And in other news, we continue with the news, man. I'm Absolutely. Keep rocking. Boom. Can you read that? Or do I need to big it up? Oh, not that one. <clears throat> yeah, now you need to get that a little larger, my friend. Screw it. Where are you going? Don't go that way. Turn it back this way. Tyson Fury. Can you read that now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, guys. I'm going off line until October 10th. Someone else will be keeping you updated. Total blackout for me. See you in Vegas. Let the games begin seven weeks Saturday till I smash the big DASA again. God bless and that is from the gypsy king as you can see mr tyson fury yeah let the games begin for real let the games begin ain't lying about that <laughs> he's already begun a long time ago for deontay wilder so he's a little bit behind if that's what he's you know might want to catch up tt you might want to catch up man or is it tf tf you might want to catch up yeah man and definitely listen a lot of people think that, you know, this extra time might favor Deontay Wilder, man, sharpen his skills that much more. You know, whatever it is that people say he's not good at or whatever, you know, he's working. He's working on now, you know. He definitely is. <laughs> he's working, so we're going to see. i uh, show you a little bit of this right here. Hold on. In other news. That's why y'all got tuned into the way, man, because we just, we just do things different over here. Today, we're just chilling. We're supposed to have a dope interview. Didn't work out, but that's show business. And we move on. There you go. There you 
go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. How that sounding to y'all? Love Did that joke, man. Look like he's sharpening up, no? Yeah. Yeah, he's sharpening up. That's from Jamal's Heron page. Look like he's sharpening up. Getting ready for Shakur. Tell you. That <laughs> one's going to be a good one when yeah, it goes man. off. Can we see that on the Bud Crawford versus Sean Porter? On the card? Can we get that on the undercard? Super bag, man. Come on, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> waiting a shout out. Francis and Greg, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for the, the idea, man. Y'all going... What I'm telling you right now, y'all pay attention. They're gonna start doing in boxing where you're gonna have big cards, super cards. I call them super cards where you get a super bag, depending on how you work the business. But it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, man. And you heard it here first. So just always remember that. The original, the originator. Yes, yes. No mistake about it. No mistake about it. So yo, we ain't gonna waste too much more time. You know what I'm saying? We just want to bring you some news and notes what's going on in boxing. And we're going to get out of that. We're going to get out of here. You know what I'm saying? We're going to catch you on the next one. We got more content that we got to chop up. Yesterday was an amazing day. He was in the gym with Tristan Brooks. Shout out to Tristan Brooks, Coach Tony Wallace. He was out there working with them and all the young amateur fighters. I was out there. It was amazing uh, to be out there yesterday. Thank you for the invitation. And if y'all want me to be at the gym, uh, me or Greg to be at your gym. All you gotta do is drop it in the DM, and we'll definitely pull up. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, uh, and and capture some footage. Of y'all working out and do what you gotta do. Um, again, if you want myself or friend, uh, myself or Greg, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> at your gym, you know what I'm saying, to record and watch you work out. All you gotta do is slide in the DM at the way in boxing on IG and let us know address, time, day. That's all it is, and we there. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, you definitely know Derek Lynn. And remind them we call it the Super Bag. Y'all go ahead and smash the thumbs up button. We got a lot of big things coming. We are definitely working behind the scenes on some things, so keep it locked. Um, smash that bell icon to become a part of the notification gang. That will let you know what we got going on and who we got on the show and when we got it on the show. We appreciate y'all so much, man, for, for rocking with us and tuning in with us wherever you are around the world, wherever you are listening, watching around the world. Shout out to the UK. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to yeah. all the countries that support us and listen to us. We appreciate you, whether you're watching or you're listening, downloading this podcast. Give us that five-star rating. You know what I'm saying? And big up the ting on YouTube. We're trying to get to you know our goal of a, uh, of a thousand subscribers, so it's easy for y'all to support us by hitting, you know what I'm saying, the the uh, super chat button and we can grow and build together. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We appreciate y'all. A lot of boxing coming up, man. Greg. Yeah, man. Yo, we're going to see you guys Friday night. We're going to solidify all these picks, you know, give our final breakdown of the weekend fights. So definitely check us out on Friday and every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, you know, check us out here, man. We always got some hot interviews. We always got the next wave of talent. That's going to be, you know, coming, whether it's from Canada or anywhere around the world, man, definitely tune in, man, because you never know who's going to show up on the way in. So definitely, we will catch you all on the next one, man. Appreciate you listening and viewing, man. And Derek, appreciate your support, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. We love it. Appreciate it. Um, And everybody out there, see you all on Friday. Rafi, see you on Friday. Everybody, tune in back on Friday. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a lit show. Um, We're going to have some some guests on Friday, and we're going to talk about some ways to make some money. And we just gonna have a great time, man. So do what you gotta do and stay good, people. Peace and love to everybody tomorrow. Hope you're good. Yes, sir. Peace. Hold up, it's the way in. Call up and you're waiting. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing when you think it's about to end. Should we crank it up again? Hold up. Pull up in your way in. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing, and we do this every day. Never ever duck a fade. Hold up. Hold up. Greg and Francis keep it popping. Keep it popping.
dropping knowledge, switching up the daily topics. Switch it up. The latest interviews, okay, okay, we got, okay, we got your favorite podcast, Playboy. Yeah, we the hottest. Hold up, you gotta wait, wait, wait. articulate, explain it, explain it. Lay it all out for debate and dropping game. No, we ain't playing. Two star fans, let me know where you at. It's all about a fight. Who got that strap? All your biases can slay. Let your boys up in the fade. Hold up, it's the way in. Call up and you're waiting. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge, we ain't playing. When you think it's about to end, should we crank it up again? Hold on. Greg. Yo, man, we're going to check you guys Friday night. Everybody be good, be safe, God bless, and good night. Peace and love, y'all. We outie.